Welcome to Fixing GLSO and HLSO. My name is Timothy Lattice and this is the Neo Kino Graphics channel. This talk is about improving share languages. I'm going to try for some concrete, sometimes heavy suggestions. Let's start with the top problems for me personally. VGPR register pressure goes crazy, meaning I can compare my own hand assembly of the shader to the compiler's output and the compiler goes way over what I can easily do by hand. This torches occupancy and typically forces a latency bound shader. Second problem, lack of ability to express on a high level what I know I want to get out of the low level assembly. Meaning it's easier just to write the assembly with defiance for each chipset variation than to try to make the black box do the right thing. Lastly, compile times get crazy long with big shaders. So long it becomes impossible to iterate and do interactive development. Now let's dive into some concrete suggestions. The first one is a pre-optimized pragma. The idea is to turn off compiler helper paths for poorly written shaders, things that turn into de-optimization paths for well-written shaders. A great example of one of these anti-helper paths is checking if an atomic operation is wave uniform or not, and then dynamically at runtime, conditionally transforming the atomic from a multi-lane to single-lane operation. If you're already doing that in the shader yourself, you don't need the compiler doing it a second time for you. Second thing, wave uniform qualifier, aka use the scalar GPRs. GLSL syntax would be like subgroup underscore uniform, put that before a variable. That would tell the compiler, yeah, I want an SGPR on AMD, and on NVIDIA, this would be a URX or a UPX if it's a predicate. Next thing, branch hin hinting. I'd like ability to label a branch with explicit cogen hints. First, true equals and then some number, floating point number from 0 to 1. This would be the probability of a true in the comparison, or in the if, and so on. Divergent. This would be the conditional will evaluate differently per lane, or it could possibly evaluate differently per lane. Coherent would be the conditional will always evaluate to the same value for all lanes meaning it's something that doesn't necessarily have to be done in the vector unit. Whole would mean that all lanes of the wave are active for the, uh, the if, while, etc. For example, subgroup elect can then just use lane zero instead of actually searching for the first lane. Partial, that would mean that some lanes may be inactive. Here's some examples of mixing a bunch of these together. If I do whole true 0 0.5 and divergent, that means the lanes of the wave will always take both paths. On AMD, for example, the compiler could remove the branch and simply use the EXCC modification for better performance. And then here's another example, whole true equals 0.99 coherent. This means that the else path would almost never be taken. A compiler can make the if true path completely linear and branch away and branch back again on the else. Another big thing I think we need to put in the API side is to be able to force an allocation in 4 gigabyte aperture. This way, if you need to do 64-bit pointers or so on, you can just explicitly modify the 32-bit bottom part. Note, AMD most certainly already supports this for descriptor sets, meaning they pass the 32-bit least significant bits of the set pointer in the preloaded SGPRs to save on space. You note, you'd want to be able to do this for things beyond just descriptor sets. You'd want to be able to do it for shaders. You'd want to be able to do it for, uh, for buffer allocations for data, too. I'd like to see labels and go-to support in shaders. It'd also be nice to be able to build 32-bit lookup tables with labels to jump to. So, in other words, mixing this with that 4 gigabyte aperture allocations for shaders. Another nice thing to have would be clause hints. This one would have a simple syntax, just clause, well, open bracket, clause, close bracket, and then the curly brackets for the scope. This would be defining a set of instructions that you want to run at the same time. Typically, you'd use this to clause out a bunch of loads. And on AMD, they could actually use explicit clauses because there is a clause instruction. Another big thing we need for register allocation, and this, this one is actually humongous, is ability to disable common sub-expression elimination. This one, I'd suggest just using open bracket recompute, close bracket. We could apply this to either a variable or a scope. There's lots of things you could potentially want to apply this to. 
The idea here is that you locally prevent common subexpression elimination with the prior code blocks as of the point where you're actually using this um, construct. This is a necessary tool, in my opinion, to work around cases where a compiler fails register allocation due to caching too many reused variables at different stages of execution. In other words, I've had cases where I do I redo the loads a second time, and the reason I do that is because if I was to keep them around, then I would I would end up having too low occupancy. There's no way the shader would run well. A lot of times the shader compiler will just bump up uh, register pressure too much because it doesn't want to reload the loads. If you have no control over that, there's no way to actually fix the problem. Well, there is. I mean, you have to go into workarounds where like you add fake um, coordinates that the compiler doesn't know is zero to the coordinates on the second load. And that's kind of stupid that we have to go to that extent. Another thing in the, for register pressure problems is it would be nice to be able to explicitly hint about register reuse. And the problem here is that when you go into single assignment form in the IR, you basically explode registers. And then somehow the compiler has to come up and drop single assignment form back into a small set of registers. And typically it does a horrible job. So the suggested syntax would be uh, open bracket alias, close bracket, and then to just use a union construct. So yeah, GLSL would have to add the union um, and then whatever's in the union, you'd want to you'd want those things to alias the same registers. So you're not doing explicit register allocation, but you are providing a hint, and that hint may just be the one thing that you need to get the compiler to do the rest of it itself. And note, we'd want these in global and local scope, and we'd want the hints to go down to the IHV compiler. That means things like Spear VOP would need to be modified so they don't flatten this and remove it. Also note that global unions mixed with subroutines with no arguments or no returns, that would provide a great way to get shader libraries to work because there's no ABI and thus there's no call stacks and there's none of that deoptimization stuff. You just have pure fast libraries at that point. Obviously, you'd have to come up with uh, some type of agreement between the library and the shader that's using the library as, you know, what is, what is the max register count? And, you know, typically on AMD, that might be 64 registers on the lower register count machines, and it, you know, might be a little bit higher on the higher count ones. Another thing we need is a device uncached portability path. Now, AMD provides device uncached as a memory type when you do allocations for memory, but NVIDIA does not. And it would be great if we could somehow mitigate all the different kinds of hardware here. So there's, you could have page table settings, descriptors, and instruction opcodes. All those places may contain what you need to do for device uncached. So what I'm suggesting is do a portable version where you do a superset. And that is you just specify it in all possible locations and the hardware that doesn't need it in that location just doesn't use it. Which means we would need to put a memory qualifier in and I'm suggesting putting in device uncached as the memory qualifier. The idea here is that you can force a store to go through the bus, for instance. And so, for instance, if you have, you want, you don't want to have to be force flushing all of your caches just to like write something through on, you know, so the CPU can read it. Another thing we definitely need is a streaming memory qualifier. I would suggest a stream for this. Vulkan lacks the ability to express this, and it's definitely supported on both AMD and NVIDIA. The use case of this is if you know you're only going to touch the cache line once, you don't want it being uh, leaving pollution in your cache. It would be nice to be able to mix and match this with read-only and write-only. In fact, it would be necessary. Another thing that would be great to have is an extra prefetch hint. The syntax for this, I would like to see this in the load functions. I didn't put a direct syntax, but people that are in the standards bodies can uh, argue about this one. The idea is to provide a hint for the memory operation of how much extra bytes to prefetch on a cache miss. Note that NVIDIA hardware supports this today, so you can just look at what they're doing and the ask is to be able to do what they can do in their hardware. Another thing that would be great to have is specifying qualifiers on the point of memory access instead of having it in the layout. 
So I have another presentation that I haven't finished yet, but it's going to show the extreme layout aliasing that you need to be able to use uh, image ops and so on with all the different memory types and formats. It would be nice if instead of putting it at the layout, we could just put it inside the function. Per it would also be nice to have a bunch of the standard things that map to the current hardware instructions. For instance, 24-bit integer multiply, this thing is super useful. It comes up all the time. On PC, you're basically screwed. Things like bit field ops that the compiler has to reconstruct from other operations, that is pretty horrible. And especially when people are using HLSO and they're trying to run on mobile platforms where the compilers don't do the pattern matching, you end up with all sorts of problems here. So the ask here is, Take the subset of all the useful things and all the platforms and make those as in intrinsics and don't make them as things that are implicitly figured out from other things in the source code. Another thing that's definitely missing is tbuffer support. So for AMD hardware, this is the instruction where you're using a buffer descriptor, but you're providing the format and the opcode instead of using the one in the buffer descriptor. This would traditionally be used for programmable vertex fetch. However, it's quite useful for many other things. It would be nice to get this in the API so that we could use it in a portable kind of way. This one probably requires a lot of discussion, um, something I personally haven't thought too much about on how to make it easily portable across other hardware. And this might be getting close to the last suggestion, but it'd be great if we could just expose the chipset ISAs in extensions. In other words, if you're, you would just have a query of which chipset you're on and then you'd set up that that um, extension and then you put some defines and then each vendor or sorry each software vendor that is building a game they can make their own portability macros it'd be great then we can just avoid all the confusion in the compiler the compiler just knows exactly what you want the compiler is also free to do workarounds for hardware bugs so that's it the talk's getting too long um, i'll probably follow up someday when i'm not in a rush